we ready to hear from the next president of the United States, President Donald J. Trump? Come on out, sir. Summoned by J.D. Vance, his newly appointed compere and deputy, Trump swaggers into the arena like a prize fighter. The white bandage on the life-saving earlobe may have been demoted to a humble plaster. But the story of his near death soldiers on, arguably his best material yet. They keep saying, he's a threat to democracy. I'm saying, what the hell did I do for democracy? Last week, I took a bullet for democracy. What did I do against democracy? Yeah! Trump's stand-up routine meanders from serious to comic and back again. And the crowd just can't get enough of it, oblivious to the issues that vex the America that abhors this man. Immigration! The lies, the court cases, the toxic taunts. But this lot are also far more united behind Joe Biden staying in the race than Biden's own party. Cue more material. So who would you like to most run against if you're us, if we want to win? Ready? Kamala Harris. Crooked Joe Biden. As for the man everyone is talking about, President Biden hasn't been seen in public since negotiating these stairs last Wednesday night. COVID may have kept him covert, but it hasn't silenced the growing chorus for his departure. Being able to show the whole world have a transfer of power can be done by the superpower of the world in a most respectful way. I'm hoping for that because I think it'll leave him with a tremendous legacy. He's one of the greatest leaders that we've had. And I say this, and I came to the decision with a heavy heart that I think it's time to pass the torch to a new generation. In the UK, removing prime ministers may be a blood sport, but in America, the daggers are sheathed in velvet. It's past the torch, not get the hell out, but scratch the veneer of deference, and you quickly get to raw nerves. Are you angry that he's still there? I am angry. I mean, I, I am glad that he got Trump out the first time, but frankly, he's been disappointing in the way that he's handled his transition um, into this election. And unfortunately, I don't think we can win if he remains in the election. You know what established members of the Democratic Party who are still supporting Joe Biden call people like you demonstrating against uh, what they, him? What do they call me? Bedwetter. Uh, I mean, my pants are dry. Rain, rain aside, um, I, don't, I don't think it's bedwetting. I think it's, look, um, this is a serious election. There are serious stakes, and we need to have a serious conversation about what our best path is to victory. Time and is I, running out. It is. Thank you, Joe. Who knows what the president is listening to? Clamor from the streets, muttering in the corridors, whispers of betrayal in his head, reassurances from his wife. America may be a democracy, but on the matter of Joe Biden, it feels very much like a cloistered monarchy. Well, I'm joined now by Mr. Biden's biographer, Chris Whipple, author of The Fight of His Life Inside Joe Biden's White House. Thanks very much for coming on the programme, Chris. Who do you think you. Joe Biden is listening to right now? Well, he has a very, uh, very small inner circle of advisors he's relied on for decades. And first and foremost, his family, Jill Biden, his sister Val, uh, Hunter, uh, and then his close uh, inner circle of advisors, uh, Mike Donilon, uh, Ted Kaufman, with whom he used to ride on Amtrak every day to the Capitol. Um, now, look, I think it's going to take a minute with Joe Biden. Um, and it should, frankly, because Biden and his advisors know a lot about elections, uh, possibly more than Barack Obama and George Clooney. I mean, they've been underestimated time and time again. Joe Biden believes he has this connection with the working class voters of America. They proved it in 2020 when they were counted out time after time after time. So it's going to take a minute for, for Joe Biden to leave the stage if he does. Right. Do you think he's being smart, stubborn or reckless or perhaps a combination of all three? Well, I think this is Biden being Biden. You know, he's a very proud uh, person. He's, he's certainly always felt that he had a golden gut when it comes to politics. And he certainly proved it over the years against uh, all the people who counted him out. So I think this is, this is vintage Biden you're seeing right now. And it's going to take a minute for him to, uh, to decide to move on if he does. So there's still a big if there, right? He may decide to stay. No, I mean, 
Uh, the reports that I've read that say it's a matter of when, not if, I find dubious at this point. I do think that the pr political pressures are just enormous here. I mean, we we haven't seen such a wild political drama uh, in the hist in modern history. I mean, this is a screenplay that uh, no no screenwriter could make up. And as if to prove that point, Aaron mm -hmm. Sorkin jumped in today with an op-ed in the Times suggesting that the Democrats nominate Mitt Romney. I think it's mm -hmm. going to be even wilder than a, an Aaron Sorkin mm -hmm. screenplay before it's over. Mm -hmm. Now, we know about that phrase, follow the money, and the money looks a bit troubling, doesn't it? Because Donald Trump has raised an awful lot of money, I think twice as much as Joe Biden, since uh, he was prosecuted, and Joe Biden's money is in danger of being frozen by the big donors. I mean, can he continue when the taps run dry? Yeah, I think this is somewhat overblown. I'm not saying that it's not a serious issue. Obviously, the money is everything. Uh, but Ron Klain, uh, the former White House chief of staff, was quoted as saying, you know, donors, the Democratic Party donors don't pick the candidates. And that's still true. And I think, frankly, uh, July and August are usually slower months when it comes to fundraising. The spigots really turn on in, in, in earnest uh, in September. And I think that, uh, you know, I, so I, I do think that Biden will have enough money if he goes ahead that the donors mm. will ultimately come back if that's if he's the guy at the head of the ticket. But again, I think there's mm. tremendous pressure. Uh, we had Joe Manchin coming out again today. And I think, look, people are uh, I, mm. I have a bet with a high official in the Trump campaign. Okay. He thought Biden would be yeah. gone by Monday. I think I'm going to win that one.